Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's all find the duplicate number. And you can see that I'm not really a big fan of this problem and maybe I'm just salty, but I really feel like this type of problem is the ultimate test of whether you've seen the problem or not. But I'm still solving it nonetheless because it's an interesting problem and it does show up in interviews quite a lot it seems. I really don't know how anyone would be able to solve this problem in a 30 minute interview without having seen it. Even the person who came up with the algorithm Floyd, I, I doubt even he could solve this in 30 minutes in an interview setting. But that's okay, let's just learn the problem today. So we're given an integer array of nums containing n plus 1 integers. This is the length of the array, but every single value in the array is going to be within the range 1 through n. So we have n different values that could be in the array, like n different choices for the integers, but we have n plus 1 integers. So that kind of implies that at least one of the numbers is going to be repeated, and they tell us that actually it's only one number is guaranteed to be repeated. And the only thing we want to do is return the number that is repeated more than once. Now, the easy way to solve this problem, of course, would just be have a hash set, right? Iterate through every single value, find the one that occurs twice by using our hash set. That's going to be O of n time and O of n memory, but they tell us that we can only use constant extra space and we can't even modify the input array, so we can't even sort it or anything. And I think those restrictions probably make this a hard problem rather than a medium problem, but that's okay. So there's two aspects to this problem, and I'm going to explain both of them. So we're going to solve this in O of n time and O of 1 space. The first thing to recognize is this is a linked list problem, specifically a linked list cycle problem. And the second thing is to know Floyd's algorithm which will tell you the beginning of a cycle in a linked list so there's two problems one to even recognize that this is a linked list problem and two to know the algorithm to actually apply to it once you know that so let me actually show you how we can we can figure out both of these things and yeah you're right it's probably not super intuitive and i i'm not really sure how you would be able to figure it out on your own if you've never done something like this before so remember that the length of our array is n plus 1, but every value in the array is going to be between 1 and n. So there's n different values, but there's n plus 1 positions. So in this array, we have five different elements, right? And we know that the elements are going to be in the range 1 through 4, right? So basically, instead of thinking of these as values, let's think of them as pointers. So we know for sure that every single value in the array is going to be in the range 1 through 4. That means if we considered every value as a pointer, each value is going to point at some position in this block of 4. You can see that this one points at position 1, this 3 points at position 3, this 2 points at position 2 over here, and this 4 points at position 4 over here, and then this 2 points back at position 4. So that's how you can kind of see that, you know, in that case, there was a cycle. And you can see I basically drew out the linked list version of that. So it's not hard to see that this portion is going to form a cycle because no matter what value we look at, it's going to point at some other value inside of this range. There's never going to be an exit condition. None of these values are going to point outside of the range, either, you know, over here or over here. None of them are going to point outside of the range. So this portion is going to form a cycle linked list somewhere, right? What about this value? Is this going to be a part of the cycle? Notice how none of these values, nothing is ever going to point at index 0. Because remember, our range is between 1 through 4. None of them is going to be 0, so none of them is going to point here. So we can guarantee that this is not going to be a part of the cycle. And when you see, I, I took this array, drew it as a linked list, you can see this is index 0, right? You can see that this was our cycle portion, but this was not included in the cycle. And that's going to be very important because we do, when we start traversing this linked list, we're always going to start here because we know this is not a part of the cycle. 
So in our input array, you can see that two is the duplicate, right? Two is the one that shows up multiple times. So in the context of this problem, this position is going to point at index two, and this position is going to also point at index two. So what does that tell us about our linked list? That means at the node that's labeled two, the, each value of the node, each label is going to map to the index. So this is basically node two, right? What that tells us about node two is that multiple nodes are going to be pointing to node two, right? Therefore, we know that this is the one that's going to be the start of the cycle. We know for sure there's going to be a cycle and we know for sure there's going to be a portion before the cycle. The portion before the cycle, of course, is eventually going to lead us to here, which is the start of the cycle. And of course, there's going to be another node that completes the cycle, right? Putting it back, pointing back to this node. So if we can somehow identify the beginning of a cycle in this linked list, then we will know that that beginning of the cycle is the return value that we're looking for in the output. You can see, yes, two is the duplicate. That's the one we want to return. Therefore, we want to return the start of the cycle. So at this point, it's all about applying Floyd's algorithm to find the beginning of a cycle. So that's once you've determined that it's a linked list problem, then you just need to apply this algorithm. And this algorithm itself is actually also not very intuitive. So let's look at a slightly different example so I can illustrate the uh, Floyd's algorithm. So first I'm just going to tell you what the algorithm is and then I'm going to explain a little bit of the intuition of why it actually works. So the slow pointer and fast pointer are both going to start at this position. The slow pointer of course is going to be shifted by one each iteration. So that's one jump, that's two jumps, that's three jumps. So we just made three jumps with our with our slow pointer. Let's do the exact same thing with our fast pointer. So remember, a jump with the fast pointer is going to be two positions. So that's one jump. That's two jumps. And let's make two more jumps from here. So we're going to go to two and then back to three. So you can see that it got a little bit messy, but we made three jumps with the fast pointer and we made three jumps with the slow pointer. And you can see this is the first position that they intersected at. So this was the intersection of the, uh, of the two pointers, right? This was the first intersection. So that's the first phase of this algorithm. First, we find the first position that they intersect at. Then we take our slow pointer, leave it here. So our slow pointer is going to be here, right? And then we're going to be done with the fast pointer. We're going to take a second slow pointer and put it right at the beginning of the array. And each of these slow pointers, we're going to keep shifting them by one until they intersect one more time. So this slow pointer is going to be shifted by one. This slow pointer is also going to be shifted by one. Hey, we just found out that they intersected, right? And this second point of intersection is always going to be the result. It's not intuitive at all all why this is the case yet, but let me explain that. But now you know the algorithm. If all you wanted to do was memorize it, that's literally it. Now you can code it up. That's why I don't like this problem because it's simple if, you, if you've solved it before. So this algorithm relies on the fact that the intersection point, like the first intersection between the two pointers, the distance between this point and the beginning of the cycle, which in this case is one, right, is always going to be the same as the starting point distance from the cycle, from the start of the cycle. That's also one, right? Since we know that's the case, that's how we can take two slow pointers, start one here, start one here, and then keep shifting until they intersect, then we get the result. But why is it the case that the distance between this is the same as the distance between this? Looking at this bigger example, why is it that the, the distance between the start and to the start of the cycle is always going to be the same between the intersection and the start of the cycle? Why is that the case? Well, let's just draw out a few distances. Let's say the distance this is p, right? Basically, p is the number of previous nodes we have before the actual start of the cycle. And let's just say, you know, arbitrarily, this is the, the intersection point between the two points, right? And we don't know that this is going to be the same. So let's just label it X for now. Let's not label it P so because we don't know for sure that it's going to be the same. Let's label it X. This is our unknown. And then the remaining portion of the cycle is going to be 
c, which is the length of the cycle, right? In this case, it's five minus x, right? Because the total cycle is is five, which is c, and this this x portion makes up the remaining portion of the cycle. That's why the, this part is c minus x. So we know that the slow pointer is going to start at the beginning. It's going to traverse this p portion, and then it's going to traverse this c minus x portion, and it's going to land at the intersection point, right? Now we know that the fast pointer is going to do more than that. It's going to, of course, do this P portion once, then it's going to do a complete loop, right? Because remember, the fast pointer is going to out loop the slow pointer and it's going to overlap the slow pointer. So it's going to have to complete a, a full, at least one full loop. And then once it, it does a full loop, it's going to be back here. And then it's going to traverse this C minus X portion to get to the intersection point, right? We don't know where the intersection is. Obviously I drew it over here, but it could be anywhere. So let's write that mathematical equation out. So we know that two times the number of iterations the slow pointer does is equal to the number of iterations the fast pointer does, right? How many uh, spaces it moves versus how many spaces the slow pointer moves. Of course, the fast one is twice as fast. That's why we have to multiply the slow one by two to make it equal to this one. And how many iterations did we say that the fast one does? It's going to do P plus CX, right, to get to this position. And then it's going to do another complete cycle starting from here to get back to this position, right? So it's, it, the fast pointer is going to be P plus C minus X plus C again. So more simplified, it's going to be P plus 2C minus X. The, the slow pointer is just going to do P and then it's just going to do C minus X. So we'll have a two on the outside, P plus C minus X. So I'm gonna take this equation and simplify it over here to the right. So once we simplify it a little bit, we're gonna get two P plus two C minus two X, which is equal to P plus two C minus X. And then this is the part where you can start doing a little bit of algebra. So we can cross out the 2C from both sides of the equation. We can cross out 1X from each side of the equation. And we can cross out 1P from each side of the equation. Once we do that algebra, we're left with the equation. And sorry that it's getting a little bit messy. We're left with a single P and a single negative X. So we get P minus X is equal to, notice how we crossed out everything on the right side. So we got P minus X is equal to zero. When we rearrange that, we get P is equal to zero. What did we just prove? We just proved that the pre portion of the cycle is always equal equal to this, right? So that's how we know once we have a pointer over here, then we can set another slow pointer over here, keep iterating them by one. And for sure, when they meet, they're going to meet at the inner, at the start of the cycle. They're always going to meet at this position. So I hope this explains a little bit of the intuition and a little bit of how, you know, this is very rigorous. This is a proof. This is always going to work. And now you know why it's always going to work, but the code is actually really simple. Now, one last thing I didn't mention before we dive into the code is that notice how this P, this pre portion could be really long. It could be even longer than the entire length of the cycle. So how would that update our math? Would our math still work out in that case? And I didn't include this in the math because I don't wanna overcomplicate it too much, but yes, the math would work. Instead of having two C over here, we would have an n over here and the math would end up still working out basically we would always start back at the beginning here we traverse this many nodes and then from here basically instead of just traveling this small distance it could be possible that we would have to do multiple loops you know because if this distance was really long longer than the length of this loop we would have to do multiple loops but after all of that the remainder would still be this portion left so we would still end up getting to this position, the inner, the start of the loop. Okay, now we can finally get into the code. So remember, we're going to be starting at phase one of this algorithm. We're going to have two pointers, fast and slow. They're always going to start at zero, remember, because we know zero is not a part of the cycle. That's for sure. And we're going to keep iterating through these loops. I think there's an easier way to write this code, but I'm lazy. So just while true, we're going to, and we, we start out with while true because we want to keep going until they intersect, but notice how they already intersect at the beginning. 
So we're gonna update slow. So basically slow is going to be set to whatever it points at. So nums of slow, right? And then fast is going to be the opposite or the same thing, nums of fast. But remember we're, we're advancing fast twice. And so we can just do this. And of course, fast and slow are always going to be in bounds, right? They're never gonna point out of bounds. We know that for sure based on the restrictions that were given. And if slow is equal to fast, that's when we can break out of the loop. If they're not equal, then we're not gonna break. This is basically a do while loop, but I don't think you can do that in Python. So once we've done this, that's how we know, okay, fast and slow intersected here. So now we're gonna create a second slow pointer, slow two. We're gonna set it to the beginning, right? Back at index zero. And now we're gonna keep incrementing this slow pointer and the first slow pointer until they intersect. So this is phase two of the algorithm. While true, advance the slow pointer uh, by one and advance the second slow pointer by one as well. Notice how trivial this code is. The hard part is just figuring it out. So, and we're gonna keep going until they intersect. So if these were equal, then we can break out of this loop and then return the slow pointer, right? We can return either of them, slow one or slow two. Index that they're at, right? Slow, slow one and slow two are always an index and the index that they're at is the duplicate number because we have multiple values pointing to the same value. That's the duplicate. We can actually take this and return it here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. And this is the entire solution. Okay, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know why I put fast on the outside. This is nums, uh, nums of fast, which is a number, which is a different index. And then we're gonna use that same index again in the nums array. That's how we're basically advancing fast by two. We could obviously write it in different lines of code, but I'm just gonna leave it as it is just because it's a little bit neater. And also, I don't I don't really know what I'm thinking, but the slow, the second slow pointer also needs to be advanced. I don't know why I called it slow one, but that is the entire code. And then once they finally meet, we are gonna be returning that index. And as you can see, the solution does work. It's in a linear time solution. We definitely didn't need to use any extra space. We didn't need to modify the input array. This is the Floyd's algorithm uh, with a fast and slow pointer, beginning of a cycle detection. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot, and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.